Hi there. Welcome to Reflections, a program sponsored by the Paducah Cooperative Ministry. And my name is Heidi Sir Heinrich. I'm the Executive Director down at Paducah Cooperative Ministry, or PCM as we call it, and one of your co-hosts for this program today. <coughs> and with me, I'd like to introduce Scott Dossett, our other co-host. And Scott, tell us a little bit about what brought you here today and into PCM's realm. Absolutely. I got a chance to volunteer at PCM through some friends that I know, and we're relatively new to Paducah here. I've spent about the past 10 years as a worship leader and pastor and currently working at Fred Meyer's School of Driving. And so just kind of hanging out this morning, listening to the yo-yo ladies. Yeah, pretty much nerves of steel. Anybody who teaches <laughs> driver's ed can handle anything <laughs> we like to think. Um, Paducah Cooperative Ministry is a local cooperative where we seek to do God's work with human hands. And so today, Scott and I are really pleased to uh, introduce to our program Virginia Hancock and Pat Lewis. And these ladies and a, just a handful of other ladies are every day doing God's work with human hands in this community. Yeah. And um, welcome, ladies. Welcome, Virginia. Welcome, Thank Pat. You. you guys are quilters of some expertise and renown to our way of thinking. <laughs> um, and so what we want to talk about today is how your love of quilting and how your love for the community came together to create what you call the Yo-Yo Club. Uh, who would like to t start us out with that? Well, I guess I will. Okay. okay. I, uh, we became a group in 1998. Okay. Uh, it was the occasion of the shooting at Heath High School. All right. mm. And the museum uh, asked for blocks. They wanted to make a quilt of remembrance. Mm. Well, the blocks came in from all over the world, and it took two years, and we ended mm. up with 28 wow. pieces. Wow. And uh, so they were distributed to the people who were active in uh, oh, helping and uh, the families mm -hmm. who were involved and the school. And um, after we did that, we wanted to do something to help the museum. And they had a, a program, an arts program. Mm -hmm. And we said, what can we do? And uh, Vicki Fioro, the director, said, well, you can make yo-yos. Teach them to make yo-yos. Okay. So we started teaching Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts <laughs> and teachers, anyone who wanted to learn how to make a yo-yo. And that's the way our club started. Okay. And then we decided we wanted to quilt in the lobby. And mm -hmm. we asked if we could quilt in the lobby once a month. At the quilt museum. At the quilt museum. And uh, demonstrate hand quilting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, we didn't think that was enough, and we asked if we could quilt once a week. Uh -huh. And then we asked if we could make the raffle quilts, quilt the raffle quilts for the museum. It would save them having to buy them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way we started, and we didn't okay. make money then. But later on, we started making little things to sell, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, that's the way we got started. Okay, sure. so this is a fascinating story. Mm -hmm. um, I know what a quilt square is, a quilt block is, um, but I didn't really have a lot of quilting knowledge to understand what a yo-yo was. And I bet there are other people like us that, that don't know. What is a yo-yo? Where do you get your name? Well, you take a circle. Uh-huh. And circle of uh, fabric. You, it's fabric, and uh -huh. it, uh, cotton is best. Okay. And uh, you turn it down uh -huh. a quarter of an inch, and you take your needle and you start sewing. And you sew all the way around, and when you get back to the other end, and you use strong thread because you're going to pull on it, and you, you just put your needle in and take a, a stitch, and you keep going until you get all the way around. Uh -huh. I started this one so it wouldn't take so long. <laughs> and when you get back to where you started, you pull those threads up, and when you pull those threads up. Oh, wow. You can see what is going to take place. Uh -huh. The hole gets smaller and smaller, and you can pull it up really tightly, mm -hmm. and then you tie it mm -hmm. and, um, and cut your thread, and you've got your yo-yo. So where does the thread go so that I can... Uh... 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot kind of, of people yo-yo. are mistaken that way. A lot My of bad. people think that it is a wooden <laughs> yo-yo. But this, uh, in England, I think they're called puffs, but puffs. in our country, they're called yo-yos. That's so interesting because a lot of us just think of quilts as in, you know, it's geometric strange. shapes. Mm -hmm. And so this really is a trademark for you guys, the circular um, piece of fabric drawn in, and you have just gone to great lengths <laughs> to make it's use very, of that. Very in, uh, old. It's very, very old. It's an old, very old is technique. Okay. Yes. Uh, actually, how it started was I did a little doll bed. I wished I'd have brought a little doll bed and brought it to show, and everybody uh -huh. wanted to know how to make yo-yos, and so that's how the little bed was uh -huh. the one that started us. Okay. Yeah. All right. You found so, something that was very unique and special right. to your group. Uh -huh. And, just and with since the idea. then, since then, they've been books written, and it has really There's come books back. Books on yo-yos. Books yes. on yo-yos. Wow. I mean, it's it's come back. Wow. And I think we our our group has has helped been that come back. That. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. In so. fact, we decided we wanted to make one. Uh, for the museum to wrap off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we started by making 25 yo-yos each a week. Okay. Well, that, 100. Uh -huh. And uh, we got 6,000 yo-yos oh. and uh, started putting them together. But it got so heavy, we couldn't use all of them. But it was raffled off uh, three years ago when we had our 20th anniversary okay. and uh, at the museum. Uh -huh. And it was raffled off. Well, I love the idea that you quilt in the museum so that visitors to the museum can see the finished product, but they can also see what goes into that mm -hmm. as an educational piece. Yeah. That's and hand so, quilting is kind of uh, becoming a thing of the past. Not as many people right. hand quilt mm -hmm. since they have the long arms and the oh. machines, but right. we like to demonstrate the hand quilting. Yeah. Well, I'm interested in these yo-yos. What's the biggest yo-yo? Oh. you've ever made? Like, oh, that's a good question. Foot and a half, <laughs> three feet, you know, what's the biggest yo-yo that you I made? I imagine that's the biggest right That one right there? there? This is the biggest yo-yo right here. And that's and pretty it, interesting. It won't flatten out because it's got the uh, pull cord in it. But this is a yo-yo, and when you pull it up, you can see, of course, our yo-yos are flat here, mm -hmm. but, uh, but this is a yo-yo. That is adorable. And so you have these little bags. Do they sell those little bags too? Uh, the, yes, they are. Uh, there's right. a lady down there that sells them. We don't make them. Okay. Okay. So you began with the Heath shootings. It drew mm -hmm. quilters together. Mm -hmm. And out of that process, you said, which took about two years, yes. you guys kind of bonded together and, mm -hmm. and uh, connected. And when that was over, didn't want to right. lose that connection. Is that right? Well, um, in the beginning, there were a lot of people who participated in the putting the blocks together mm -hmm. and making the tops, and we started quilting them, but they all kind of fell away, you uh -huh. know. So it ended up being mostly us who hmm. finished the quilting on the quilts, and we didn't know each other at all. Now, Charlotte and Anita had gone to school together since they were in first grade, so they had been friends, but had parted and then got back together. And those are some additional members of your club yes. right now. So we have like uh -huh. 20 or 30 members of the club. Is, is it a big club? Five. Five, no. five members oh, of the mean, club? Of our club. Yes. yes. Yeah, there's just five, five women of us. that do yes. all of just this five. work. Right. Wow. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. Oh my and goodness. we've been together since, I mean, we just kind of bonded. We had two other members that passed. Mm -hmm. And they were special. Oh. Yeah. And, but that, sure. that happens. But, um, the five of us are joined at the shoulder. <laughs> well, we we talk every day mm -hmm. on the phone, mm -hmm. and and you have these ongoing projects. Right. So let's talk right. about what some of the projects are that you do, and and what you do with you sell them, but you do you benefit the community because of your work. Can you tell us how that comes together? Well, we do the, the cards uh -huh. uh, for the gift shop. Those are wonderful. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we appreciate the museum's gift shop, uh, the mm -hmm. National Quilt Museum, because they've given us this opportunity. Okay. It, it's a benefit to them also, mm -hmm. but it benefits the community okay. through us. Everything we make is given to charity, mm -hmm. and we don't 
keep anything. Mm -hmm. As soon as we get it, we discuss where we're going to send mm -hmm. it. And sometimes we get it faster, like you've just gotten too pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And then sometimes we have a dry, uh, dry time. Sure. And, and it depends on, actually it depends on how many people come into the museum. Hmm. The carriers, uh, we're, we don't sell in the museum. We sell them only at our quilt frame. Now, so that's what is just, a carrier? Tell us a little bit about that. The thread carrier is okay. a little, that little thing right there. It's right here. And uh, it, you put your spool of thread in, and you can thread up to 10 or 12 needles. Uh, and yeah. then when you pull that first needle out, pull how much thread you want, then the rest of the needles all stay threaded. That is, and that is very that handy is awesome. for quilters or for anyone who does any kind of sewing. Any sew on a button even. I'm thinking I need one for my purse for when the button falls <laughs> off in the middle of the day. Right. I'll whip that right. out and, and put the button back I'm on. I'm thinking I need one. No, never mind. I, I don't know what to do with this. Your, your wife, wife needs probably one. Like that. <laughs> yeah. And your mother needs one. Uh, the the uh, quilts that we make for the different that we've made for River City Mission and the mm -hmm. spouse abuse. We did make Hope Unlimited. We did the Pregnancy Crisis Center quilts also. Mm -hmm. One of our members is also a member of the Guild here in Paducah, the Paducah Stitch and Quilt. Okay. And they do what they call Bags of Love, oh, yeah. which okay. is um, they do a pillow slip and they do a small quilt and put like toothpaste in and toothbrush oh. and that sort of thing. And these are to give to children that are taken out of their homes. Mm, terrific. Like that's great. for drugs or sure. something. You Going know. into foster care or yes. something. Yes. Like that. So that's that's, that's a that's good a, that's a a program too. Thought. So, so caring. Yeah. Well, and we also do Project Hope uh, No Kill. The shelter. Animal shelter. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, you we, guys are just so we, far reaching we in the are work just, that you yeah, do we're just, and the benefit. Um, sure. The No Kill Society just really, um, really touched our heart because mm -hmm. they don't. You're animal lovers. Yeah, we're an, <laughs> we're all animal lovers. We animal all lovers. have an animal. We all have a cat. <laughs> sure. That's our chicken pin cushion, and he has little yo-yos for wings. Right there. That's amazing. Those are so tiny. Yeah. I, I am not very <laughs> agile and dexterous with my fingers. So when I look at the work that you have done and the size of some of these yo-yos. Um, it's incredible to me, and, and Scott asked you about the biggest yo-yo that you've ever made. You know, how small do they sometimes get? What? Well, you t Virginia, <laughs> Virginia, did. Virginia, what's the smallest yo-yo well, -yo you've ever made? About the size of the pen. Oh my! About the head goodness. of this pen. The, the head of the pen. Oh, wow! I, I have made them twice, uh, four or five, and just to show, oh. because they're not useful for anything, and. Uh, they, they get taken. Uh, I don't have any now. Well, I would lose them myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're no, easily there's, lost. That's this, incredible to think about being able to do something that small. The smallest ones we do for our projects are the ones that are on the vine card and on the dog card. Mm. Okay. On these? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, Ooh, that and then the dog here, the little oh, dachshund okay. right there. Oh, okay. mm. The rest of them are a little bit larger, and we try to keep... Um, ahead mm -hmm. so when we get an order we don't have to rush into doing it we try to be ahead like you have a hundred of each of the kits made and okay. ready for and then yesterday we were quilting at the frame and mm -hmm. the like I said the American Queen was in and they sold a lot and so the girl in the gift shop said has anybody told you we need chickens mm -hmm. so after I leave here today I've got 50 chickens I have 50 to deliver to them. So we've got five women sewing their fingers <laughs> off to benefit the community. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you, When did you first get involved with Paducah Cooperative Ministry? Because I know we have benefited in wonderful ways I can't, from the Yo-Yo Club. How long have we been doing that? I you think, have it at home, but I I, have, I think we started with just the fans. Life. Yes. And then we saw a need. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think... We even bought things and took mm. uh, food. items, the food mm. items, mm. and then we decided money mm. would be a, a good way you could get what you needed. Yeah. And so I haven't kept records except the last four years, and we've, we've given you at least $5,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's amazing. Wow. So, so you create all of these things, and they're available for sale at the Quilt Museum and other places like that. And all that money that you 
raise from the projects that you've sown goes back into various community ministries like Paducah Cooperative Ministry. Yes. You go out and buy 20 fans and bring them to PCM or you send a check so that we can help with utilities or right. rent evictions and things like that. And that is so inspiring. And we try to give it away immediately. We sure. don't try to hold it and say, well, there might be a, a, a worse need later on sure. because if we give it away, we know we're going to get more. Sure. The Lord is going to bless us Absolutely. with more. But if, if we hold on to it, I don't think we would get more. I think that's, that's an important thing to think about. You guys were saying, uh, we talked about earlier, and uh, over the past 10 years or so, about how much did you say that you thought that you might have, have, have been able to contribute back to the community? Just in 10 years. These are five ladies. This was just an amazing number to me you for said. five ladies. <laughs> well, right now it's at 94,400 something. Nine. But we do have one fund that we put back for the 1st of December because the museum has a need then for matching funds. Sure. So we have another thousand. So wow. that'd be 95,400. So five ladies. $95,000 over the past 10 years. Ten That's years. inspiring. It's very inspiring. Okay. You you all are incredible. You must be sewing from the time you wake up in the morning. <laughs> a lot. We do. It's, but we're all older and uh, so we don't, we're not involved with children mm -hmm. like if a, a younger person would be. And we do. We just spend, we spend a lot of time. Yesterday was funny because the boat was in and mm -hmm. and at the beginning it was slow and we sold two little carriers and I said, well, looks like this is going to be a slow day. And mm -hmm. Carolyn said, yeah, that looks good. And then all of a sudden, we got up to 35. We sold oh 35 of those yesterday. That's fantastic. But we're saying, oh, no, we got to go home no, and make more. Make more. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's clear that you love what you do. Yeah. Um, you know, you would have to. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that you must love the colors and the textures and the um, you know the challenge. Could we possibly try to do this? You know, let's hmm. let's see if we can do that. And, and, uh, well, uh, Charlotte, one of our members, she has uh, I don't know how many sets she has, but she'll say I'm, I help make them and then I have to buy them because <laughs> uh, she doesn't want to lose them. Is that yeah, right? she's, she'll them. find one like. I had made a, a carrier with a Coke fabric, and she's a real mm. Coke oh. person. <laughs> so she just had to have that little Coke. Sure. One. Well, well, that, you invest yourselves in it, too, though, and so that makes it more valuable, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about fabric. It, anybody that I've ever met that sews loves fabric and collects it and is always looking for one more piece, one mm. more color, one more pattern. Do you have marvelous workshops at home that is that is just filled with fabric do you purchase it is the f fabric given to you do people help you with that we we have been so blessed we have actually uh, about two years ago I met uh, a lady at the rotary show mm -hmm. and she had a had a um, a portfolio with her and we you know quilters just talk yeah. and we start talking and she said she had miniature quilts in her portfolio and I said, I love miniature quilts. Mm. So I said, I've got to see these. We went into the restroom on the baby changing thing, and we all looked at it. Got to be friends with her. She's from Illinois. And she decided she was going to get rid of everything, all of her fabrics, oh, and they wow. were good fabrics. Mm -hmm. And she decided she wanted to donate them to the yo-yos. Mm. Wow. The and she brought two SUVs full wow. of fabric That's to huge. us. So we're blessed. Now, we see a, a piece of fabric at a quilt show or something mm -hmm. that we think would really make neat mm -hmm. um, carriers, and one of us will pick up a piece. Mm -hmm. But mostly, we have been just so blessed with people giving us mm -hmm. fabric. Okay, well, I bet there's some people watching this program today that maybe have a stash of fabric that they thought they were going to do something with, and maybe they realize that they may not get to all the projects they had in mind. Mm -hmm. So how would they donate fabric to the Yo-Yo Club? Well, they can always reach us through the National Quilt Museum. Okay. And we're always there on Wednesday. All right. Well, we have two Wednesdays a year that we're not there, and that's in March and November. We so take a 
we take a retreat in March and in November <laughs> and uh -huh. go up to the lake and just have four days of just Aww. enjoying each other. Do you quilt on your? On we your do. Uh, we bring our, our we own take things. our own projects and, and, sort of, and it's fun. But we have been blessed and buttons. They, you know, the little, we had to have little shank buttons, mm -hmm. and so we put out a word mm -hmm. for buttons and. So many people were so sweet about that. Virginia's daughter actually got online and tell the story about that. <laughs> she got online and found this lady that sold buttons. And so she called her and she said, uh, I need small shank buttons. And the woman said, I've got thousands of buttons. What's a shank? Oh. <laughs> and you, tell, you tell us what it is so we well, all know. <laughs> A uh, shank is, see, the button doesn't have holes. You don't go through ah, holes to hold the button. Underneath okay. the it's button. underneath. Right that that little thing is called a shank. Okay. okay. Well, uh, that lady, my daughter, bought a postage box this full uh -huh. of shank buttons, the right size. Wow. So we don't have to worry about them anymore. God <laughs> provides, right? <laughs> yes, We have does. a lifetime yeah. supply. He <laughs> does. Uh, I'll tell you a little story about how he does provide. Um, we had just given away, uh, we had just gotten $1,000, a check for $1,000. Mm -hmm. And I think we had sent 300 at that time to PCM and 300 to Project Hope. Uh -huh. And we had 300 for the backpack program. That's what that was for. And it was after I had gotten home, my husband and I went to get a sandwich and he had gone in and I was just talking to the Lord. And I said, Lord, thank you. We had, they had given us another order for $600 at the museum that day. Mm -hmm. And I said, we just got rid of that. And and he said, well, but no, I, I gave you back $600 because that's how much you gave away. You still have mm. the 300 so <laughs> <laughs> he does. He yeah. just provides. So faith is central to what you do. Oh, yes. In your love of community and your love of quilting. And God is the thing that really draws that together like a yo-yo. Yeah. Right. The work and we that try you do. to, when people ask us about our club, we always say that it's through God. Well, that's just obvious. Mm -hmm. sure. we're, there's five of us, and it's, we're I all know, old. It's a miracle. I mean, <laughs> really we're all is. not young, but yeah. yet the Lord has given us the fingers to be sure. able to do the things that we are doing. Right. I mean, it's through Him yes. that we are doing what we're doing. Well, I sure. love the thought that, and I think this is so true in our in our walk with God, is that if we hold on to things, He can't yeah. provide anything yeah. additional to us. Yeah. It's only when we let go yes. mm. that He can continue to provide. And yes. so um, yeah. we sometimes forget that. We get nervous and we want to hold on to things, uh -huh. afraid that no more will come if uh -huh. we let go of that. Mm. And you guys have just demonstrated how, how beautifully God continues to provide as soon as you let go of something, sure. there's right. something right behind it. And to it. trust, to say, if something big, bigger comes up, then he's going to provide us, like yesterday, we mm -hmm. got this order. Mm -hmm. We'll get another check from, you know, the more we give away, the, of course, the harder we have to work, but that's <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, yeah, it pays off, right? Right. Well, I have to know, you guys started sewing at what age? You know... Did your mothers teach you the first mm -hmm. first couple stitches? What did you get started as, I'm, as a seamstress? I'm, uh, I'm one of seven girls, okay. and my mother did all our clothes, but I never had a quilt. We didn't have quilts in my mm. home. Oh. And uh, when I was 35, we lived out in West Paducah, and I bought my eggs from a young uh, from an older lady, and she did quilts that were absolutely mm. wonderful, and. I loved them, and she said, let me show you, and she let me borrow her big bag of scraps, and she started me on a grandmother's flower garden, which <laughs> Is that a it's a wonder one? I'm still a quilter. <laughs> I had to hand piece the whole thing, wow. but wow. she's the one who started me quilting. Mm -hmm. I had sewn all my life because I have two girls, and I did all their clothes when they were little, but never thought about quilting mm -hmm. until I saw her quilts. And then uh, before she died, she called me out there one day and had three of her quilts hanging on the clothesline. And she said, I want you to choose one. Oh, wow. So I have one wow. of her quilts. Oh, that's wow. wonderful. That's and wonderful. then, Virginia, you can talk about you. Yeah. When did you <laughs> well, I, my mother quilted. My aunt and my mother quilted. Mm -hmm. And I was there and I helped them. But I didn't do much quilting. But when my husband died, I had to have something to occupy my time. And mm -hmm. I 
piece to quilt. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I've got to quilt this thing. I've got to learn how. But it laid there and I didn't learn how. So mm -hmm. finally I put it in the frame and just started. And that was in 92, I think, is when I uh, mm -hmm. started quilting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been quilting. It must years have since. just gotten a hold of you then. Yes. To, to oh, continue yes. to oh, it's, it's addictive. very addictive. Is it addictive? <laughs> yes. okay. Addicted to quilting. Yeah. Yeah. That's, we are. That sounds like a pretty healthy yes. vice, I mm -hmm. think. That, that's mm -hmm. a wonderful vice. <laughs> so, if we want to come and hang out with the yo yo ladies, we come out to the museum on Wednesdays. Right. Just um, all day, or just you spend all day with you? Well, we get there about 9, and we get things set up, and we start, but the museum doesn't normally open until 10. Mm. So we're there from 10 till 3. Okay. We used to stay till 4, but everybody got a little worn out, and they had to get ready for church on Wednesday night. Sure. So we decided to leave at 3 so we could take a little break before. Wow. And we can find all these things here, and all the things that you do goes back to the community. Right. That's great. Mm -hmm. Uh, Virginia and Pat, you guys are awesome and so inspiring, and I hope that there's somebody watching this program today um, that feels like maybe there's something they can do with their hands that would be of benefit to the community mm -hmm. and have an impact like you, what you guys have done. And I know that you were a little bit hesitant coming on the program. You didn't want to have a sense of blowing your own horn. Yeah. And, and no, what we're really trying to do is say, look what five women can yeah. do if they can do that the rest of us can step up and figure out what gifts has God given us, sure. you know, that we can share. Clearly, you guys have made good use of the gifts that God has mm -hmm. provided, but he gives gifts to all of us. And some of us are a little slower to figure out what those are. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're all meant to do something, and it's not all the same thing. But um, the work that you do is just wonderful. And Absolutely. I hope that it will inspire some other folks that maybe haven't Maybe they know how to sew buttons on and, and hem pants, but they haven't gone to the next level. Um, to come out and watch it at the, at the Quilt Museum and, mm -hmm. and see the process and see the wonderful things that you have for sale and feel that in good conscience, I can buy a bunch of this stuff because it's gorgeous and it's, I'm helping the community by yeah. buying this, right? Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Well, we thank you very much, and we thank you very much for all that you do for Paducah Cooperative Ministry. I know that we are just one of the ministries that you support with your work, um, but we are so grateful and lifted up. And, and, Scott, I say this all the time. It's what keeps us going down at PCM are the folks that come in the back door yeah. um, that say, maybe you could use this, or yeah. I heard you needed that. So thank you for being with us today and Absolutely. thank you Virginia mm -hmm. and Pat for being with us and thank and you all of you us. who have joined us today we sure do appreciate mm -hmm. your time yeah. and spending this this period with us on reflections and remember we at Paducah Cooperative Ministry are seeking to do God's work with human hands responding to basic human needs in the community and anybody can do that so um, we're all in it together thank you and we'll see you next time in missions,